Thank you to HelloTalk for sponsoring this video. Okay, hey everyone, and welcome to the fourth episode of a Japanese teacher grade your Japanese. Today we're going to be looking at just one person's Japanese, and there's kind of a special reason for that, but I'll get into that in a second. So today we're going to be looking at Shu-san's Japanese. So let's just start watching. Konnichiwa, Dogen-san. Shu to moshimasu. え、最近の YouTubeのチャンネルで載せた動画をジャパニーズティーチャーグレイジャーパニーズっていう動画を見ててあ、あ、俺の日本語も直してほしいなって思ってこの動画を録音しています。え、僕は日本語3年ぐら
eat one beat and then ku one beat as well. Four mora, two kanji, noun. So it's actually not kyoiku, but kyoiku, more or less flat. Kyoiku. So it's actually not kyoiku, but kyoiku, more or less flat. Kyoiku. And there are so, so, so many words again that fall into this pattern. And just by knowing this single pattern, you immediately know the correct pronunciation, the correct pitch accent for literally hundreds of, of everyday nouns in Japanese just by knowing this one single rule. So I made a, kind of a little list um, of a bunch of everyday rules, uh, everyday nouns that abide by this rule because they fall into this structure and also have this pitch accent. So let's just go down this list right now. Gakko as in school, daigaku as in university, kouko as in high school, gakuse as in student, benkyo as in studies, ginko as in bank, shoukai as in introduction, honto as in really, saiko as in the best, saite as in the worst or the lowest, saiyaku as in the worst, kouban as in uh, police station, tomodachi as in friend, kantan as in easy, kokusai as in international, doubutsu as in animal, fukuzatsu as in complicated, mondai as in problem, denshu as in practice, shinpai as in worry, and literally hundreds, I don't know the exact number, but certainly at least a hundred more other, a hundred more nouns that fall into this pattern and have this word structure, have this pitch accent pattern as well. So by listening to how many everyday nouns I just said that fall into this pattern, it's kind of mind blowing, right? It's kind of like, wait a second, it's not gakuse, but gakuse, and it's not daigaku, but daigaku. That's exactly right. You can um, accurately, to a, a very high degree, assume that nouns in Japanese that have four mora and two kanji fall into this pattern. Now I say to a high degree because there are exceptions to this rule, but because there are so many words that abide by this rule, you can just memorize the common everyday exceptions and then assume that all, all other words that aren't in, in, in that exceptions are gonna abide by the rule and, and it will immediately increase, again, uh, your kind of Japanese pronunciation bat batting average, so to speak. This single rule by knowing it, it will instantly improve the naturalness of your spoken Japanese. So let's go over some of the exceptions right now. Ongaku. This is four mora as well and two kanji as you can see, but it's not ongaku, it's ongaku. Kyo, uh, so yeah, music, if I didn't say that. Kyodai, as in uh, sibling. Sensei, as in um, teacher. It's not sensei. And it's not sensei, it's sensei. Annai, as in to show or to guide. Uh, zanen, as in unfortunate. Kyuryo, kyuryo, as in uh, salary. And then, what was it? There was another one. Uh, <laughs> meiwaku, as in, sorry, I forgot to write like three or four <laughs> common ones down. Meiwaku, as in uh, a nuisance, being a nuisance. Aisatsu, as in greetings. Uh, gen genkan, as in kind of the entryway to someone's house at, at, in a Japanese house. And then also uh, keizai, keizai, as in um, economics. Besides those kind of exceptions that I've just listed right now, I've, I basically believe that it's safe to assume that all other four mora nouns uh, in Japanese that have two kanji will fall into this heibam pattern. And again, when you assume this, overnight you stop saying like literally hundreds of everyday nouns wrong, especially for a, a native English speaker, and you've been saying all these words as like gakuse or ginko or uh, saiko or kouban. So, shusan, your spoken Japanese, again, your pronunciation, I literally think is already better than mine. So if you just memorize this rule, I would say that probably most Japanese people, uh, and you like really get this rule into your bones, so to speak, I think that you'll get to a point in no time at all where your spoken Japanese sounds better than my spoken Japanese. So as mentioned earlier, HelloTalk sponsored this video, so I'm going to kind of take a couple minutes and just introduce their service. For those that don't know, HelloTalk is a language learning application that allows you to directly interact with native speakers of that language. I've talked about this a little bit in the past, but for a very, very long time, I used a service called language8.com. And on that website, what you would do is you would write something in Japanese and then native Japanese speakers would correct it. And then you would in turn 
correct their、uh, English. Hello Talk is kind of like that, but it's better because you can actually record yourself speaking Japanese and then get direct native input, essentially instantly, which I think is extremely valuable. So now what I'm going to try and do is make a little recording of five of the words that I said、uh, that I said earlier with the correct pitch accent. Let's try and say them with the wrong pitch accent and see if we can get a native speaker to correct those. So I'm going to click the mic and make a little recording. University, daigaku. Uh, study, benkyo,、uh, the best, saiko,、uh, friend, tomodachi,、uh, animal, dobutsu,、uh, problem, mondai. I guess I'm gonna try and post this right now, and we'll see、uh, how long it takes to get a native response. Looks like I got a response. I got a response. Ten minutes after I, I posted the video, there are a couple of <laughs> Japanese speakers that are just saying "tote mo jules," which is、uh, kind of a cultural thing. But one of the responses that I got has explicitly、uh, written down the pitch accent of all the words. And this guy actually also he gave a recording of the correct、uh, pitch accent of all the words. So let's listen to that real quick. If you want to pronounce them in Tokyo accent, they should be "taigaku benkyo." So there you go. That's the four more rule in action. Obviously, this is extremely, extremely valuable for people that are actively trying and trying to improve their Japanese pitch accent and, and pronunciation. And then there's a bunch of really cool features such as auto translate, and you can hold long words that are in Japanese, and it will switch them into romaji, so、uh, Roman characters. If you're just starting to study Japanese and you can't read、uh, kanji and hiragana yet, so that's obviously very useful. You can use it for free, and then they've got special. VIP accounts as well, so there's some perks involved there. But I would encourage everyone watching to at least check the application out if you haven't already, especially if you're studying Japanese and you're trying to improve your spoken Japanese. So, check out Hello Talk. Thank you again to Hello Talk for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to Shusan's Japanese. There's kind of good evidence that you're already starting to say that you already kind of have a. Okay, understanding of Japanese pitch accent, and that's because there were there was at least one word in the video that most native English speakers. I think that you're a native English speaker, or at least English is one of your first languages, because you said that you went back to Toronto, which is obviously、uh, an English area. But you said、um, "doga." The doga o mitete. Which is the word for video in Japanese, and most native English speakers who've never studied pitch accent will pronounce this word as "doga," "doga," with the accent, excuse me, at the beginning of the word. This is is not an example of、uh, a word that falls into the rule that we covered earlier, but it is an example of a word、uh, that it. That falls into that general category that we introduced in a couple of videos ago, and that's that about half of three mora nouns in Japanese don't have an accent, so they're also hebon. So do u ga do ga do ga. It's not do ga again. It's do ga, and you said that the correct way. So you're already off to a, a, a decent start in terms of pitch accent. And I assume that you've never studied it before. It sounds like you, you haven't in terms of not not your your accent, but by what you said.、Um, so. Combine that with the rule that I just explained, and you're going to be in just this absolutely incredible place. And you're beyond your pronunciation; you're really articulating your thoughts in a really, really natural manner. And except for that kind of one very small minor thing when you said "mite tan da kedo," "mite tan da kedo," I think that essentially there was no other kind of major things that stood out to me、uh, in terms of well no, non phonetic issues. I swear that there was one more thing that I was going to say. Oh, it also sounded to me like you were saying the word for Japanese Japanese language as、uh, "nihongo" with the accent on the on the "ho." And I've kind of talked about this in previous videos, so I won't. I believe I talked about it in, in actually in lesson one. So I'll just、uh, leave a link to that below. So if people wanna, well, it's not <laughs> Nihongo, but Nihongo. It's more or less flat. Again, Hebang, another Hebang word. So I'll leave a link to that video below. But again, Shu Song, you're off to an incredible start, and if you just,、um, well. For now, I would say just concentrate on memorizing that single rule that I've introduced today. If you do that, you'll be in an 
absolutely incredible place in no time at all, especially because this rule is so easy to understand that uh, you'll be able to, again, immediately improve your Japanese basically overnight just by learning the rule. So, so um, I think I'm going to end the video here. In this video, I primarily wanted to cover the four mora to kanji noun rule. And that's because, again, when I listened to Shu-san's video on, on Twitter, I heard and I thought, okay, this is the perfect opportunity for me to introduce introduce that rule, which is so important. So everyone watching, memorize this rule. It's incredibly important if you would like to sound as native as possible. If you would like me to uh, phonetically analyze your Japanese, you can send me a video on Twitter at Dogen, D-O-G-E-N, and uh, please embed the video such that I can watch it immediately. Please also provide a download link so that I can, uh, such that I can download the original uh, version with the original quality. And then if you can, also add, add subtitles. That helps with, um, well, that helps for people that are just starting to learn Japanese right now, and maybe they don't have, they, uh, it's more difficult for them to understand exactly what's going on. Incidentally, the next video I'm going to put out is going to be a return to kind of the normal comedic style video, so expect that. And then also, uh, thank you again very much to Hello Talk for sponsoring this video. So I'm going to end things here. Thank you all very much for, con <laughs> thank you all very much for your continued support, and I'll see you again soon. Deo <laughs> amata.